Hi folks, Mark English here. Here is the second of my Confessions of a Paranormal Investigator column that I wrote a few years back. And it's all about possession. Now imagine a brilliant white light. Okay. Now imagine that brilliant white light is passing through your body and onto the person next to you. Right, with you so far, I think. I'm sure this ritual is very familiar with people who have attended a paranormal investigation and to some it's a necessary routine at the start of an investigation. This procedure is supposed to prevent any malicious spirits, demons, elves, fairies, unicorns, pixies, etc. fill in the blanks from attaching or providing harm to the individual. So I'm confused here folks and maybe you can help me out. I find this practice very odd indeed. Now in all the time I've been doing this I've never been attacked bitten, whipped, kissed, stripped, slapped or beaten by any potential entity. But I'm told that just by imagining, which equates to making it up, then everything will be hunky-dory. And a bonus for Star Trek fans, you can literally say shields up. But why do there have to be a bright light that is thought of? Maybe I could imagine an armoured tank that I could sit in and lock the doors. Surely that would protect me. Or maybe a suit of armour would do the trick. As I've often said, I think people get carried away about what spirit can allegedly do, what I like to call the snowball effect. And it's no doubt a throwback to centuries of old superstitious dogma that has embedded itself in our culture. On one occasion, I was working at a famous London tourist venue filming for a charity ghost hunt. As was expected, a protection ritual was performed for the guests using some incantations and ointments encompassing some ancient goddess. So as this is all being ceremoniously done, a thought occurred to me. What about the tourists who flock by in the thousands to visit the place for a day out? Do they buy their ticket from the box office with the staff saying something like, that's one family ticket for you, and if you'd like to just pop over to that room, a staff member will provide a protection ritual for you. Uh, don't mind any of those nasty spirits spoiling your visit and following you home. That's £7.50 please. On another occasion I was invited to join a very nice group of people at a location on the south coast. Sure enough, out pops the protection ritual. I was invited to join in but politely declined. Don't mind me, you, you carry on. I said as everyone solemnly linked hands and bowed their heads as though attending a funeral. I watched quietly as two girls in the team started to get that most troublesome of habits, the giggles. The group pressed on with more of the feel the light pass around the circle and the ladies did their best to prevent their chortles splurting out into the proceedings. Now, if you believe in this stuff, and I'm sure many do, that's fine, and who am I to tell you otherwise? I'm always open to new ways of experiments on vigils, so here's what I'll do folks. On the next investigation, I'm going to forge ahead and imagine my armoured tank equipped and ready for spiritual protection, 